I had been having headaches and they got worse. And so I went to the emergency room and found out I had a large mass in my brain. I was getting dizzy and tired and I was coughing up blood for a couple of months. I was diagnosed with cancer that was spread it to my brain. I didn't really have any symptoms. I woke up one morning, was getting ready to go to work, and kind of collapsed. I was diagnosed with stage four glioblastoma. I wasn't gonna let it kick my butt. Cancer is an abnormal growth of cells that will either grow locally or spread to another part of the body. And when you have that abnormal growth of cells, it can crowd out other normal, healthy parts of the body. Radiation is a cornerstone of the treatment of cancer. When we think about the tools that we have to fight cancer, we think about surgery, treatment that will affect the entire body, such as chemotherapy or targeted therapy, and now potentially immunotherapy. Radiation has a more local effect. Radiation targets the very center of the cell, the DNA, and it breaks DNA into pieces. When you break the DNA, you're able to slow that rate of growth or potentially stop that growth entirely. And the cell will shrink and eventually get absorbed by the body. Radiation therapy is complementary to surgery in the sense that radiation helps treat the microscopic disease that may be left behind. Radiation therapy is an invisible x-ray beam that travels through the body and there is no pain associated with it. The x-rays are applied to the area that we are trying to target and once that process is done, the treatment for that day is over. We know that cancer recurrence can generate from just one cell and that's the premise behind using radiation after surgery. So, how's your eating and drinking doing? It's great whenever patients bring friends, family members. Many patients, whenever they get to see the doctor, their mind goes blank. So bringing somebody to the doctor with them always helps. They have another person who may think of a question that they wanted to ask, but then just forgot whenever they saw the doctor. It's very important for me to understand what's really going on. Normally I have someone to come with me and it is very helpful. Look in here, how many fingers? Brain cancer is one of the most common conditions that we treat in oncology. A primary brain tumor is a tumor that begins inside of the brain or potentially inside of the spinal cord. The secondary tumor is a cancer that has started in another part of the body and spread to the brain or to the spinal cord. Radiation is very commonly used in the treatment of brain cancer. In particular, the reason that we use radiation is that there is a physiologic barrier between the body and the brain that keeps some of the therapies that we use in cancer care from crossing into the brain. Because of the blood-brain barrier, radiation plays a more important role in the treatment of brain cancer. All right, sweetie, I'm gonna move you. You just lay heavy, okay? Let me do all the work. The first step in the radiation treatment process is to have a CT simulation or a CAT scan. For this CT, we're going to use the information to aim and shape the radiation. Here we go, warm and wet. For all patients that are undergoing brain radiation therapy, they will have a mask made for them in their initial CT sim. There are holes in all of the masks for brain patients that they can breathe through and that they can open their eyes through. So that once they realize that they can breathe through it and see through it, it makes them feel a lot more comfortable. It takes about three to five minutes for it to dry and it contours specifically to your face. They will mark where your tumor or where your lesion is. So that way when it is time to actually receive your radiation, the therapists are able to position you properly on the machine. The mask took a little while to get used to because it was confining. Once you go through one or two treatments, you just get used to being stuck in that place and you you actually appreciate the mask because there's no way you could hold your head that still without it. Before radiation therapy starts, there are many imaging studies that the radiation oncologists will likely use to determine the treatment plan. This includes 
MRIs, as well as a CT scan that's performed inside the radiation therapy department. After the patient has all of their imaging done, those images come into dosimetry and we begin to contour all their normal structures. The pretreatment planning is very extensive. We are able to highly target the treatment plan. Each patient is unique and we can target these patients within a millimeter and hit their treatment site. By shaping the radiation beam and decreasing the radiation dose to the critical structures, we're able to decrease the potential for side effects. External beam radiation is generally used to treat larger tumors or potentially tumors that are in multiple locations, while stereotactic radiosurgery will be used for generally small volumes of tumors, especially if they're located close to a critical structure in the brain. Proton therapy is a different form of external beam that travels only to a fixed distance inside of the body and doesn't exit the other side of the brain. The radiation oncologist will talk with you about the different forms of radiation and which one is best for your care. And, you know, slice by slice here, this is exactly what we want. I think it's very important to be informed. Educate yourself fully because if you can come to these doctor's appointments and ask intelligent questions, then you're better informed and you're better able to, to fight whatever it is that you're fighting. So you had me come in for a big surprise. <laughs> After the CT planning is done, the patient will come back for their very first treatment. On this treatment, the patient will lie on the table. The doctor will come assess the plan to make sure it's precise and how they want it to look. So what's your birthday? They come in the room and we put that mask on that patient and we fasten it to a base plate that locks it in to make sure that they can't move during the treatment. On the patient's mask, we have marks set up that we line up to with our lasers inside the room to make sure that we are in the exact spot for the treatment. So once we line them up to those marks on the mask, we then go outside and start taking images or we administer the radiation. We can see and hear them at all times, so it does help them be at ease knowing that we're watching throughout the whole treatment. It's definitely very important for the patients to relax. During radiation, the patient will not feel anything. All they hear is like a buzzing sound. The treatment is really quite easy because all you do is you lie there and you stay still. And they do all the work. You don't actually have to do anything. Every day it was just like one more down, getting rid of some more of that cancer. I want to be done. That's how I felt. For primary brain tumors, we typically use a technique called partial brain radiation, where we apply radiation to the area that surgery has been performed, plus a safety margin for microscopic disease. For patients that have multiple areas of disease in the brain, whether that's a primary brain tumor or a secondary brain cancer, such as a brain metastasis, we'll often consider using whole brain radiation that treats the entire brain for whole brain radiation, we know that there are safe doses of radiation that can be applied to the entire brain. This is an important concept in treatment of brain tumors as there are often microscopic cells that we can't see on an MRI, however, still need radiation. All done. Congratulations. Today was my last proton treatment. I basically lived kind of a normal life. I've done things, we've gone places not been bad. The most common side effects in the treatment of brain cancer with radiation therapy include fatigue or tiredness, as well as scalp changes in the area that the radiation enters the body, and some internal changes, including the potential decrease of hearing, as well as decreased short-term memory. Many of the side effects associated with radiation during the treatment period and immediately after the treatment has been completed will get better over time. It's best to talk with the radiation therapy team and the radiation oncologist to understand those side effects and find out how they can be best managed. I think this is a very good scan. It sounds like your symptoms, you know, from a symptom perspective, you're doing a lot better. Following radiation therapy, there are additional treatments that we can offer patients. This includes chemotherapy as well as tumor treatment fields. 
Tumor Treatment Fields is a technology that applies ceramic discs to the outside of the patient's body and delivers an alternating low-dose electric current over the areas we're looking to treat. We know that after surgery and radiation and potentially chemotherapy, there's a risk of having additional cells related to the initial tumor. Tumor treatment fields can prevent those cells that may be left over from dividing and forming a new tumor. Generally, at the three-month or six-month time point, we're able to effectively assess whether or not a radiation therapy has been effective. Every day, every treatment, every radiation beam, we are killing cancer cells. I feel hopeful about the radiation. So I got some new grandkids, I want to be around them. I just want to be in one happy family. I didn't ask for this to happen, but it's allowed me to learn to appreciate my friends and family in a way that I never had before. I'm just glad to get on with life.